Hi, this is Seth David with Nerd Enterprises Incorporated bringing you another wonderful webcast. Today we're talking about accounting for trade-ins with QuickBooks. And you're also going to see an, an example, a sample of what it looks like if you take advantage of our new opportunity that's announced in our QuickBooks blog uh, in that you can advertise with us by being featured in this webcast. Now the company you're going to see in this one is not actually a paid advertiser but I did it so that you could get an idea of what it might look like if it were. So you can contact us for more information about that. It doesn't cost a whole lot. We're not charging a whole lot for it, but uh, it does get you quite a bit of exposure. We get lots of visits, people who watch these webcasts on YouTube and in our QuickBooks blog and wherever else I post them on Facebook and links from LinkedIn. A lot of people come over. So uh, Get in touch with us. Go to QuickBooksNerd.com, and that will take you to the QuickBooks part of Nerd's blog, and you'll see all the information there. Without further ado, though, I do want to bring you our webcast here so that we can show you how to handle accounting for trade-ins and show you what that looks like in QuickBooks. It's a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Don't know why anybody watching a Lakers game tonight we got this going on. Share monitor number two here. Just a second. And you should be able to see it right about now. Okay. So we're going to buy an Audi. Or actually, we're going to be the dealership. We're going to sell an Audi. And we're going to sell it to Nerd Enterprises Incorporated. So, uh... What does the transaction look like? Here's the sale. Purchase price, 114200 It's the Audi R8. We're going to sell a warranty for $2,400. we are going to charge sales tax on the purchase price. We've got fees that we'll charge of 600 Down payment, 20000 And, of course, the trade-in, which is really the focus of this webcast. And the difference, obviously, is the amount financed. We are keeping it fairly simple for this purpose. Again, the point is to show you how to handle the trade-in portion. But we're going to go over the whole transaction, of course. So let's take a look at the journal entry, because that's often the best way to get some insight into how you do this once you do get into QuickBooks. So we've got the sale here. We're crediting our sales. I do have my disclaimer here. I don't know if this is the real cost. I didn't do any kind of research. I just made some numbers up so that I could teach you how to do the accounting on it. But I, it was important to me to show you that obviously one component of the sale would be to reduce the inventory with a credit for whatever the cost is. And of course, the corresponding debit is the cost of goods sold or cost of sales. So I just made up a number here, 85000 Here's our unearned warranty revenue, our sales tax payable, fees payable, and then the rest are really the payments. These are the payments versus the cash. We're going to assume the customer is paying 20000 cash. We're getting a, a trade-in worth $10,000. That's what we're going to assume we valued it at. And the difference, again, is what's due from the financing company. So this is what the journal entry looks like. In QuickBooks, which is where we're going to go in a second, we're going to post an invoice to deal with this whole part of it. The invoice deals with this whole part of it. The offset, of course, would be accounts receivable, which I don't show here because I'm sort of leaving that part out of the transaction. So let's go to QuickBooks, and we're going to post an invoice, and then we have three payment methods, essentially, to deal with. Come over to QuickBooks. We're going to post an invoice. Third Enterprises. Audi R8. Sold. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to charge for the warranty, $2,400. we are going to do some fees for $600. So $128,334.50, you can see at the bottom here, is the total sale. That's the face amount of the invoice. The face amount that has to be paid off now is $128,334.50. Let's save this. Let's run a quick uh, open invoices report so we can sort of track what happens here. So I've got my 128,334.50. Now, what about the trade-in? First, let's take the payment because that's easy, right? We take a check, receive it from the customer, make up a check number here. It applies to the invoice. Done. Now we owe 108,334.50. So we have to deal with the trade-in. Now, one way you can do it, and a lot of bookkeepers I notice like to do this is you can create a discount item and call it a trade-in. 
in this case, you would map that item to an inventory account, a, a trade-in inventory, which would be an other current asset. You said the trade-in amount is going to be 10000 So notice as soon as I put it in, it comes in as a reduction. Now, here's why I don't like it. Look what that does to the face amount of my invoice. It brings my total here down to 118,334.50. It falsely deflates it. The real sale amount was the 128, which I'm highlighting these items here that essentially make that amount up. And if you look down here at the bottom, you'll see it says the sum of the selected cells is the 128,334.50. So this falsely deflates that, which is why I don't like to do it that way. But if you like it, you can do it. Here's how I prefer to do it. Extra step, but in my opinion, the accounting is much clearer, much cleaner. Uh, we're going to go to company. We're going to make general journal entries. Got to love those journal entries. We're dealing with the trade in, 10,000. We're getting rid of accounts receivable. We credit accounts receivable because they're paying off part of their invoice in the form of a car, a used car. And here I put in trade and inventory, of course. I put detailed notes here. So I know exactly what car this was and gave it to me and so on and so forth. When I save that, you'll see I've produced a credit here, which I now have to apply to the invoice. If I go into my payment screen. I see available credits is 10000 Discounts and credits. Done. Notice there's no payment here. It's just credits. Save and close. Now I'm down to 98,334.50, which is the amount that's due from the financing company. And once again, the way I'd like to do it is to record a journal entry. Due from third auto finance. Set it up. Sure, I'll start an auto finance company. This is going to be an asset, right? The current asset presumably they're going to pay it to us right away and again we have the balance going to accounts receivable for nerd enterprises because we pay off the rest of the invoice with that amount save and close now once again we've got the credit that needs to be applied enterprises discounts and credits check it off done everything matches save and close no more accounts receivable. Take a quick look at our chart of accounts now. Notice our trade in inventory is $10,000. as the only sale I've recorded. $20,000 cash still sitting on deposited funds. That's another webcast. And, of course, our uh, inventory assets there. I, I had set this up with a couple of them in inventory, I think. Uh, yeah, we sold one, so now there's one on hand. So That's how you deal with the trade-ins, kids. So uh, if you want, go to our QuickBooks blog take you there now it's nerds blog and you'll see there's a page that says advertise with us and you can go in there and get in touch with us and get information about how you can have your company featured in one of our webcasts either by making you the subject of the webcast or of course we can simply uh, make an announcement that this webcast is sponsored by your company with links to your website and pictures and we'll spend a minute or two talking about you and telling everybody how wonderful you are so uh, visit us here at quicksnerd.com and post your comments and questions. I've opened up the comments here on this blog. You no longer have to register to comment, so feel free, have at it, and I look forward to seeing you on the web.